Keep Nintendo weird, everybody. It's me, Seth, from All In and Nintendo Podcast, as well as Keep Nintendo Weird. Man, I am so excited to be coming at you with another episode of this. I've been having so much fun getting everything ready. I'm in a weird place right now, admittedly. I'm in, like, a time paradox because at the moment I'm recording this, right, it is June 7th, and you're not going to be hearing this for a few more weeks after I'm recording this. So I'm in this weird time paradox right now, guys, where... E3 is not started yet. I'm sitting here. I'm like vibrating with hype. We're making all these predictions. We got like our, our bingo card out there and everything. And like we're, we're all excited for E3. But by the time you're listening to this and you're watching this, E3 has happened. And so you already know the things that I don't know. I'm jealous of you right now, dear listener and viewer. Uh, because E3 is awesome. You know, like I, I just... I'm so excited to see what Nintendo's got in store for us for E3 because, of course, I love these weird little obscure Nintendo games and I love talking about them and shining a light on things like Odama, which is going to be the weird Nintendo game that we covered today with my buddy Sam, Third Strongest Mole, who we had on All In as well for our Earthbound retrospective, and it's been awesome to get to know him. And, um, yeah, so I love stuff like this, and that's what the entire premise of this show is about, of course, but... You know, I, I still love the Marios and the Zeldas of the world, of course, too. So I'm just really excited. E3 is such an exciting time. I'm really hoping we see that rumored new Donkey Kong game. I was predicting that for a long time, even before the whole rumors and leaks of a new one coming out from the Mario Odyssey team were floating out there. So I'm really hoping that that turns out to be true. I'm really hoping for a new WarioWare title. That's a big one for me. I love WarioWare. I don't know if you can see uh, right there is my copy of the original WarioWare, which is uh, my favorite Game Boy Advance game of all time. One of my favorite games of all time, just full stop. And uh, yeah, so I'm really, really hoping it's like so far past time for a WarioWare game on Switch. So I'm hoping for that. But you guys, you guys already know about all of this. You guys are like, Seth, you like, you idiot. None of that happened or whatever, you know, so. But that's where I'm at right now, you guys. I'm, I'm, I'm just super excited for the things that are going to be happening both with E3 and what's happening with All In and Keep Nintendo Weird and our new media network and our videos and stuff. And it's just, it's been so exciting. And I wanted to have these episodes kind of like back rolled uh, so that there was no delay in getting stuff to you. And, um, I, I, you know... Like I said in the first episode, we're kind of, to start out with, I'm thinking a bi-weekly schedule. I'm thinking every other Wednesday. The first episode went live on a Saturday because we wanted it to go live on our first anniversary. But I'm thinking we're going to be on a Wednesday. I like the sound of like a midweek weird kind of thing. I'm, I'm thinking every other Wednesday is going to be the current upload schedule. But... I mean, hey, if you guys want it more often, if you guys respond positively to this and you say, hey, Seth, man, like, we love you, buddy, but you got to put this stuff out more consistently. We, you got to have it out more than just every other week. If, if you tell me that, if you reach out and you say, hey, we want more and more often, then, you know, by golly, I'm going to give it to you. Uh, so just let me know, guys. Let me know how, how you're feeling about this show, if you like it. Uh, definitely show your support, leave positive reviews. And I'm going to say all this again at the end of the episode, but, uh, again, just, just voice your opinion of the show. I am listening and, and I'm having a blast doing it, but, uh, yeah, I'm not going to ramble any longer. You guys, let's get into the episode. Uh, again, I'm talking with my buddy, Sam third strongest mole about Odama, a game that I actually have not played despite owning it. It's on that shelf behind me. I own the game. I need to pick up a GameCube mic and, and play it. But he is just, I mean, Sam is such a wealth of knowledge and such a cool uh, integration into RetroLogic. I'm so happy that those guys, Dan and John, uh, added him to the cast of RetroLogic, as it were, because that guy is such a wealth of knowledge. And uh, Dan, that was one of the first people when I talked to Dan about this show, because he does our animated intro. Shout out to Dan Caparello of RetroLogic for doing our, our intro and outro. Uh, I was talking to Dan about it and he was like, dude, you've got to get Sam on the show. He is like the weird Nintendo guy. So Sam and I are definitely kindred spirits in that way. So this is, this is actually what you guys are about to see is the first time Sam and I met 
And again, we wound up having them on all in like not too long after recording this episode. So it's just been great. It's been great to make new friends. And uh, again, knowledgeable dude had a great conversation about Odama that you guys are going to listen to right now. So let me shut up and you guys enjoy the second episode of Keep Nintendo Weird. <laughs> Hey Sam, how you doing, man? Good. I'm uh I'm actually very caffeinated right now. <laughs> nice. Nothing wrong with that. What sort of caffeine are you intaking right now? <laughs> uh so in an unusual twist, um I actually uh made a recipe that I wanted to try tonight for coffee spiced pork loin. So it's what? a spice rub for pork tenderloin that includes coffee grounds. Um so yeah, fresh ground coffee and like cayenne pepper and paprika and salt and pepper and lots of other stuff. That sounds wonderful. Was it good? Yeah, it was, it was real good. Uh, I cooked it, uh, sous vide. Uh, that's something oh. I've been getting into. Yes. A man after my own heart. I love the sous vide. You just like, it's so easy. You just set it, forget it. You put a sear on that bad boy. It's awesome. Man. Yeah, I, I also, but I, the thing is, I guess I'm just on a kick with like coffee everything now because uh, I made some uh, cookies with uh, like chocolate espresso chips in them too. Nice. I love it, man. I love it. Well, we're here. We're caffeinated. We're excited to talk about some weird Nintendo games. I got to tell you, man, it, it's cool to talk to you because we, we've run in a lot of the same communities for a while. And I, I, I've seen you pop up a lot, third strongest mole here in the Nintendo Dads, you know, Twitch chat and whatnot. And, I, you know, I see you pop up everywhere from Retrologic to Nintendo Pals and stuff. We have a lot of mutual friends. So it's cool to finally uh, talk to you in person about a weird little game called Odama. And um, a game that I've never played, despite owning it, despite the fact that it's right there. Um, I've not played it. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to chatting with you about it. You were the one that kind of sparked my interest in the game watching your twitch vods on the on the game on your youtube channel and uh man it, it's it's just been fascinating man uh but before we get into it let's talk about you a little bit um you do the twitch thing and you also have like your youtube channel is that kind of your main and, and you also just joined retrologic uh as part of the retrologic crew so is, is that your kind of main irons in the fire yeah, so that that's the big news as of the time of this recording. Uh, I am officially joining the cast of Retro Logic, not as a guest, but as a host. I've right. actually guested on there uh, twice, I believe episodes four and thirteen. So I was kind of there on the ground. They didn't get uh, you for episode three. There. Like, come on. <laughs> no, and and I'm just gonna miss episode thirty three. But come on. Uh, yeah. So so there's that. Uh, I started Twitch recently. Um, that was kind of just like a off the wall, my very first surprise out of nowhere, I decided, you know what? If I ever do this, what I should do is I should stream Mega Man X on Christmas Eve oh, and call it yes. Mega Man Xmas. Yes. And I just, I just, I think I found a sale on a capture card and I'm like, fine, I'm just going to do it. Why not? I, I have nothing to do Christmas Eve. Like, my family said, you know, like my brother and his family aren't even going to like be at my parents until afternoon because he's got to be with the in-laws first. So I'm like, fine, I'm just going to stay at home and stream Mega Man X. I love so it. that started and Odama was one of the uh, one of the that came shortly after when I decided to, OK, maybe instead of a one off, maybe I'll do this as a semi regular thing. And just at that time, I had discovered Odama and was enjoying it a lot. And that's really sort of been the direction I've moved the channel is showcasing these games I don't see anybody talking about, don't see anybody right. else streaming. It's partly because I just want more people to know about them, especially the ones I think are genuinely good, but also because um, it's just a way to set the channel apart because... Yeah, I mean, yeah, I streamed Monster Hunter when it was new, but I was one of like a thousand people sure. streaming Monster Hunter at that moment. Right. Uh, whereas I was probably the only person streaming Odama when I was streaming Odama. 
Right. Uh, some of the other games I've played don't even have icons in Twitch under topics. Wow. Like I think Spanky's Quest, it just it gives gives you like the blank filler. Yeah. For the thumbnail. Come um, on. But yeah, maybe they'll add one now that it's on NSO. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was thinking. I was like, it's on NSO now, man. You got to add the, the icon for it. Yeah. That was actually what, uh, that, that was what kind of, uh, made me reach out to you for this show. Cause I mean, you're obviously you're a perfect fit for this show, man. Keep Nintendo weird. We're all about the weird Nintendo games. So, uh, you were one of the first people when I was talking to Dan, uh, from RetroLogic. obviously, uh, he was like, you got to reach out to Sam. He was like, Sam is all about this stuff. He would be the perfect guest on your show. I was like, yeah, we, we got to connect. We got to make this happen. So Odama, man, uh, tell me a little bit about how you kind of caught wind of it, how that kind of entered your zeitgeist and, and what made you pick it up and start playing it. Well, like a lot of people in the past year, I kind of got back into retro. Not that I mm -hmm. ever like really left, but you know, it kind of goes in cycles um, I think especially towards the end of last year, uh, there just wasn't a lot coming out on Switch that was brand new that was right. of a whole lot of interest to me. Uh, and that's fine because that's when you just go back and look at stuff you missed out on before. Totally. And so Odama partially caught my eye because, uh, and, and it almost made me wonder, like, okay, what's wrong with this game? Because mm. it's a Nintendo first party game. And GameCube games are crazy expensive right now, and it has stayed relatively cheap. There seems to be no demand for it. Right. Uh, it's like the only cheap Nintendo first-party GameCube game. And, well, when you add to that, you have to find a microphone, but the microphone is easy enough to find, too, for not very much. I mean, you can uh, still so get like, away with it. I really it need like... to try this. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm a Nintendo fan, and this is like a Nintendo game that I've never heard of. Um. So, yeah, uh, and I'd, I'd recently um, kind of repossessed my Wii, uh, which is one of the original models that can play GameCube games. Yeah, uh, That's been something, too, that it, it's a little odd for me. Uh, one of the consequences of growing up in a family with two brothers who also play games is we kind of fight over who gets to keep them. <laughs> mm. So... Uh, but the Wii was one I'm like, okay, I'm just going to claim this because this is the first console I bought with my own money 100%. Uh, I didn't split this with anyone else. I didn't ask my parents to buy it for me. I saved it up. I saved up the money myself and it's yours. went to a bunch of GameStops when they didn't have them in stock. So this is mine. I'm going to claim it now before somebody else takes it, loses it, sells it, whatever. Love that. Love that. Yeah, I just recently got a Wii back myself. I bought Dan's, as a matter of fact. And that's been that's been my throughway, man, playing a lot of these old GameCube games. And you mentioned the microphone, because that's something to, to sort of set up what Odama is. And again, I've not played it, but here's what I know about Odama. It is a it is by what's is his name Ute? Uh yeah, Utaka, but he goes by Ute, which is just that's just amazing. <laughs> Yes, Yut Saito, uh, the Seaman creator. Um, that, that, he and, has a thing for microphones. I was just going to say, uh, right? He, one it, of the things he is known for is for claiming <laughs> when he learned about the Wii is like, oh, there should be a microphone on that thing. And the thing I find hilarious, though, is, well, it's partially true that he did make a 3DS game, which actually does have a microphone built in. Right. But he only he contributed to like an anthology game that didn't release outside Japan. Um, but it's just like, okay, why didn't you make more 3DS games if you love microphones so much? It seems like the but, perfect fit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The more I learn about him, he's a very interesting guy. He seems not to pick the winning horse on consoles. Right. So his start was Sim Tower for Mac. You know, all those all those PC gamers play games on Mac, right? <laughs> right. Um, and then he moved from that to Seaman on the Dreamcast and Odama on the GameCube, which we look back on fondly, but sales wise, the GameCube was a failure. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And it's like, um, I mean, by all accounts, weirdly, I mean, so we've got the microphone inclusion, which is already weird. And already super unique. I mean, there's only a handful of games that utilized that thing. And then on on top of that, it's like a pinball game, correct? 
<laughs> yeah, so that that is essentially the premise. Of, so the microphone is how you command your troops. This is like a pinball RTS. Right. Um, you give voice commands to your army. Who your goal in every stage is to move the bell to the end of the stage, and you have a bell team that will constantly move towards it on their own. But you can also give commands. You can deploy reinforcements, and you also have the Odama itself, which is a giant steel ball that rolls around and crushes everything in its path, including your own troops, uh, which you control only by means of pinball flippers that are at yes. the bottom, so to speak, of each stage. <laughs> That's so weird. And, and so, and the whole time, essentially, the, the microphone implementation from just what I what I have seen on the game is you're using the microphone to give like rudimentary commands to the troops. Yeah. So you actually unlock different commands as you go. And that's one of the things like the structure is pretty unforgiving because mm. you can miss some, which could be a problem. You really need to prioritize uh, collecting those commands in the first few levels. Uh, it'll be pretty hard to not accidentally do so for some of them. Um, but you you know you have some pretty basic ones like march left march right uh press forward is one you will almost always have <laughs> to use to beat any game any level uh because that uh essentially caches in your troops morale to push forward past the enemy because in most of the stages the enemy will outnumber you at least right. eventually because they have an infinite infinite waves of reinforcements and yours are finite that's so funny. I mean, what I mean, what a bizarre concept. So, I mean, what was that like for you going back? I mean, you'd already kind of set up the stage of like I'd gotten back into retro games and stuff like that. But I guess, I guess, uh, in layman's terms, how does the game hold up in 2021? Well, like I said, it's unforgiving. But like, I was prepared for that. I was like, okay, this game's probably going to be weird and unintuitive, and that's exactly <laughs> why I want to play it. Right. Um, so, yeah, there, there's a lot. And like even midway through the game, I was sort of learning some things later than I should have. Like when I talk about that press forward, I tended to assume like if I tried to push my troops through uh, at the very last couple inches to reach the end, that I was doing something wrong. If I tried to press, if I gave that command and it didn't work, that I had you know, not done something I needed to do beforehand. Right. But sometimes you just have to like repeat that command three or four times uh, <laughs> to, to get those last couple inches of ground because that spot is where the enemy reinforcements are coming in from. So it's very difficult to gain those last few inches. Um, and I was trying to look for a way around that. And sometimes there just isn't a way around that. <laughs> That's so funny. It, what's the, I mean, is there much of a story to the game? Because it kind of seemed like there was watching. Oh, play. yes. Uh, you you open up, you boot up the game, and there's... Uh, the voice acting is all in Japanese, but there's this hilarious narration. Uh, it's, it's set in, like, Warring States, Japan, but it's this very oddball take on it where uh, the you as the commander have been betrayed by the uh, the main antagonist. Uh, I'm blanking on his name right now. Um, but uh, so there, there's a history there, but there, it, it goes into how everything goes back to the, the philosophy. Uh, the way of Nintendo is how it gets translated. And it's, it's it. basically a pun on the word Nintendo. I don't know if you've... Yeah. I guess there's something of a debate on what the word Nintendo actually means. Right. But generally, do can mean like the way of. So, so basically, you are championing the philosophy, the way of Ninten against uh, these evil forces. Uh, and that bell that you're is actually called the Ninten Bell, uh, is what it's called. So it's it's weird because this game almost positions itself as like the ancient <laughs> lost history of Nintendo. <laughs> I love that so much because it, it's. I think the most common attribution to Nintendo is that it translates to leave luck to heaven, but then that's not quite like what it means. So mm -hmm. I, 
I, from what I'm seeing here, just on the Wikipedia article, they say that this roughly means the way of heavenly duty is what they're saying here on Wikipedia anyway. But that's just so funny to me. I mean, so to, to lay that all out for you guys, this is a game, a pinball game slash RTS where you command your troops with a weird clunky GameCube microphone and it has like a story that positions itself as the actual ancient history of Nintendo in feudal Japan. I mean, that is just so bizarre. And it's the kind of thing that I can't believe that not only got made, it was published by Nintendo themselves. Like what? <laughs> That's so crazy. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going, if you'll indulge me, uh, yeah. It actually, the same opening title scroll is actually in the instruction manual, which I have in front of me. Okay. Um, I'm going to Go start it. halfway through. So it says, At the tender age of 11, Tamachio knew the horrors of war. Though the Kagatora camp had a few soldiers and fewer provisions, they possessed two secrets their longtime foes knew nothing about. One was Yamanochi family treasure, a gigantic ball known as the Odama. The giant ball was said to have been taken from China long ago during the Tang Dynasty. Legend held that when unleashed in battle, the Odama could inflict untold damage to foes or grant great power to allies, but these legends remain untested. The <laughs> other secret was the doctrine of Nintendo, the way of heavenly duty. The word Nintendo is formed from the first kanji of three proverbs. Ningamushin, attend to one duty, one's duties without ego, Tinzai Korin, those in heaven will descend, and Dogitsume, mora, moral action is a daily command. The way of Ninten <laughs> illustrates the mindset of the Kagatora army, soldiers who have entrusted themselves to the heavens to fight for a common purpose. This is the true origin of Bushido, the code of the samurai. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot. That's a lot to take in. That's so funny, man. I, I mean, like, what... I just got to admire the, I, I guess, the courage that it must take to put out a game like that. He doesn't seem to, like, with his games, like, he just seems to just be all about, I'm just going to make what I want to make. I'm going to put it out there. And if you if you buy it, great. But if not, I'm unconcerned. I'm just going to make my art. <laughs> I love it, man. Did yeah, I, I remember uh, seeing an interview with him about Seaman. And uh, he, he literally says up front, like, yeah, I decided Seaman should just be ugly. <laughs> That's fantastic. If, if For those that don't know, just you could just Google Seaman game and see what we're talking about. It's this anthropomorphic man fish where it's a fish with like a man's face on it. And um, it's hideous and awful, apparently intentionally so. <laughs> um that's such a bizarre game. Did, did, did you play Seaman? I actually haven't played Seaman. Neither I, have I. I have okay. seen Seaman, and I feel like that's enough. <laughs> yeah. Must we play it? <laughs> yeah. Is there, other than the obvious microphone thing, is there any, like, connective tissue that you could draw? Like, Seaman swam so that Odama could run or something like that? <laughs> Oh, uh, I, I think, as I said, I think Yute Saito has an ongoing fascination with voice commands. Yeah. Um, a, a little bit. So so one of the things I know about Seaman is uh, that the the pet Seaman, you're, you're, he's like a virtual pet sort of entity. Right. And he'll comment on things if you just leave the game running. And that's something that happens in Odama too, particularly at the stage select menu. Uh, your military advisor will frequently comment on how many times you've tried and failed a mission or uh, he'll he'll say like welcome back or he'll say like what are you doing if you just like sit on the menu for too long um, he gets kind of snide and it, there's a lot of humor uh, that I can definitely see comes from the same origin yeah is it is it humor that like um is intentional or is it like an unintentional humor that gets like lost in translation? Is it like a Japanese kind of humor? I mean a little bit. So like what I read about, like there's sort of like in a very, I get the impression at least that when they talk about, Oh, Nintendo comes from the kanji of these three proverbs that they're just BSing you. Right. Uh, and that may not really translate. At least that's the impression I get is like, they're just like, Oh yeah, of course. It means these three things. Um, 
but I think a lot of it is uh, it's it's just a particular sense of humor. Uh, I don't think you, I don't think it's particularly cultural or language based. Right. Um, one of the things is when you when you're accidentally crushing your own soldiers with the giant steel ball that we call Odama <laughs> is they will frequently have uh, exclamations as they are uh, being steamrolled. And, you know, they'll say things like, tell my wife and children I love them. <laughs> <laughs> and it's kind of morbid, but it's also like, and it's weird because the game never really makes you feel bad. Right. For getting all these people killed. It's it almost the way it presents it is and not just that it's just silly fun, but it, it's it almost puts a positive spin on it. And I, I get that too. The the manual has this note from the developers that goes into like, you know, the real heroes are all the nameless soldiers who give their lives. And like wow. it, there's this kind of positivity around it that it's like, yes, you got all those people killed. But it's not like you should feel bad. It's like, look at how much these people trust you. They believe you can do right. it. Right. Right. That's interesting. And that, that kind of positive affirmation comes through. It, it, you were talking about the um, specifically the ending of the game. Like there's some kind of uh, ending credits uh, I hear that, <laughs> that are interesting. Yeah, the, so the, this roller coaster of a game just... There's a plot twist. So first of all, spoilers. I don't spoilers. know how we feel about spoilers. We can go for spoilers. Uh, but you've been warned. <laughs> um, so the very last stage, you have a confrontation with a boss. Uh, there's not too much in particular at face value that's different about this stage. But when you hit the Obama into this uh, cavern in the center, you get transported to modern day Japan. And that, it's just like, okay. We're time traveling now. We're here now. It hasn't happened yet, but okay. And then you recruit. You actually, the time limit goes away while you're in this space, and you can freely recruit more in it, more uh, soldiers for your army there by rolling the o Odama around and collecting the power-ups. Um, so it actually makes the last stage relatively easy because you can do that without worrying about the timer. Um, so that's number one is like, oh, we just we just recruited people from the future to fight our battle. Wasn't wasn't ready for that one. Like you do. Like but you I do, mentioned obviously. the the credits song. This is actually performed by Vivarium's in-house band because they have an in-house band, evidently, or did. OK. <laughs> um, and very, you know, so this is Warring States Japan. Up to this point, most of the soundtrack has been either, you know, atmospheric environmental noises or, you know, like traditional Japanese instruments or an imitation of them or something reminiscent of them. And then you just get this hit with, during the credits, you get hit with this song that sounds like it came from a James Bond movie opening. I love it. I love it. Uh, so you, you should definitely look that up. Um, you have to just Google uh, Odama credits theme. Somebody's yeah. put it up on YouTube. Oh, but sure. The song is called uh, Cold and Bold, and the band is called Don't Panic. If you Google that, you will get the song Don't Panic by Coldplay. So, <laughs> Love it. I hear Don't Panic, and I think of uh, Hitchhiker's Guide. But, yeah, that's that's awesome. I And now, correct me if I'm wrong, because I was watching your, your VOD when you beat the game. And don't they straight up tease a sequel? Like, after they the credits? They do. There, there's like a the end <laughs> question mark. At the end of the credits, so I'm after all this time, I'm I'm still waiting for Odama two. Please <laughs> announce it at E3. That's my one wish. There you go, official E3 prediction. This will go live uh, after E3, but may hey, maybe who knows? Maybe Odama two is announced at E3, you guys, and you guys are listening to this retroactively and like. Hey, I mean, I no will idea. say, Yute Saito hasn't put out a new game in in a couple years, so it's you time. said. The last one you said was on 3DS. Didn't he do? Wasn't he involved with one of the, uh, one of the games that same like collective that did Attack of the Friday Monsters and stuff like that? Wasn't he? Didn't he do one of those? It's yeah. Like so, so I was referring to yeah, Guildo One. Yes. Uh, so Arrow Porter was by uh, by his company Vivarium, I believe. Gotcha. Did you play that one? I have not played Arrow Porter. I think Arrow Porter got a standalone release as like uh, on the eShop. 
at some point. Yeah. But I'm not sure. You may have to check me on that. How how interesting, man. What an interesting guy. What an interesting career. I mean, I, I mean, I got nothing. And, and you just like you look at something like Odama, and that seems to be maybe the highest budget <laughs> that he's had for a game so far. I mean, when you've got official Nintendo backing, um, seems to be from from what I'm seeing here, the last GameCube exclusive game to be published by Nintendo. So. They bet on that horse. Yeah, well, huh? the, and that's the, that is the other thing is that this is the last. Um, I think maybe Twilight Princess came after, but that was also right. a Wii game. So exactly, yeah, exactly. How interesting in terms of the actual mechanics of the game. Like as a pinball game, does it feel good? Like, does it feel good to actually do the base mechanics? Um. That's difficult for me to say. I actually found it very hard. I don't have a whole lot of experience with pinball. And the pinball precision that is required of you in this game uh, did not feel good to me then. I Mm. I will be interested on replaying the game later if I can sort of take to it a little better. Because it, it, it really does feel bad when you make one bad mistake and wipe out your whole army um, because you just, you know, you thought you were going to hit this one flood, this one, you know, you thought you were going to hit this one switch and then instead you hit the other one and now a floodgate opened and just all your troops are drowning in a river now. (laughs) Oh man, that's so funny. I, I really like pinball games, but I just, I found that, I found that idea so interesting. I've got to play it. I um, need to get a hold of a GameCube mic. But when I do, uh, that's definitely first on my list is trying out Odama. And as you kind of alluded to earlier, the game is shockingly affordable even still today. Unlike the vast majority of GameCube games, I mean, you could get away with getting a copy of Odama for sub thirty dollars, and you know, yeah. At the mic. time I picked it up, it was complete in box for I think like thirteen plus shipping. Wow, nice. I didn't include my microphone, but I think my microphone was $7. Right. Yeah, this this copy that I just got, um it was sealed for literally under $30. It was just the game, but the game itself was sealed for under $30. So, I mean, shockingly affordable. I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's just because people are not aware of the game. Um but it's yeah i I think a lot of the gamecube stuff right now is based on recognition right Uh, people looking for games they remember playing when they were young right and odama is not one of those games for anybody (laughs) right it's not a kirby air ride or a thousand year door or something like that it's one of the more obscure ones definitely where do you so you're a man that plays a lot of uh kind of these obscure weird games where does this rank for you in the pantheon of weird GameCube games? I want to say right up to the top. Like, I guess it depends by what you mean by weird. And in like, terms of its, in terms of both its quality and then also its weirdness. <laughs> okay, I, I want to say very high. Yeah, um, but I mean, just in terms of weirdness, I think we some of that probably comes from the fact that it's just so not talked about not uh you know never seen anything like i mean if you stop and think about it mario is really weird in right. principle like guy eats mushrooms fights turtle dragon <laughs> like sure doesn't make sense mario is super weird and makes no sense but we're just used to it now uh, right. we've been used to it for 35 years <laughs> um but I mean, yeah, I, I think this is right up there with uh, with your Chibi Robos and your your Doshin the Giants and and all that stuff. Oh, I especially when Doshin. it comes to the the those neglected Nintendo franchises like that. Definitely, that's what we're all about, man. That's that's exactly what this show is. It was the perfect candidate for an episode of Keep Nintendo Weird. Well, man, um, unless you want to shout out anything else in particular about the game um i mean thanks for talking about it and uh, i i would say that this is a recommendable one for folks to pick up especially considering how cheap it is at the time of this recording and it's worth it's worth a shot at the very least <laughs> I, w- I will emphasize the game's pretty difficult 
Um, yeah. I definitely hit a wall on the spider temple stage. It kind of got easier after that because the right. stages after that don't really have too many new gimmicks. Uh, every stage kind of throws some throws another curveball at you. Uh, so it does keep you on your toes. That's a good thing, but it also feels very hard. Like it feels like it's just a hard game to learn. Mm. Um, so just be aware of that. Like it, it took me a, like any time you go into a stage, you know, you're not probably not going to succeed on the first try or even the second try. Um, because you're on a timer and you have to experiment to figure out what you really need to do. It's not always spelled out for you. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I would temper the recommendation with that. Like, be prepared to sure. fail. Um, that is something though that, like, looking back on, like, otherwise it wouldn't be a very long game. But I got like a solid like twelve hours out of my playtime with it. Okay. Uh, just because the game really sort of forces you to master all the mechanics. Right. That's attractive to me these days, though, man. Like a a game that's not asking me for forty plus hours is so nice in today's day and age for me. Like, I mean, it's pinball, so you expect it. So I was actually surprised like that th there was as much meat on this as there was. Right. Um, one other thing that I have to say is I have just gained a newfound appreciation for what I now regard as some of the most beautiful words in the English language because of the triumph you have whenever you get to say them in this game. And that is flank and destroy. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's great. There is a command that that and I really appreciate that. That's like they could have just said like flank or surround. And that could have been the command. And that would probably respond through the microphone more uh, consistently. But yes. there is something about being able to say that phrase flank and destroy, knowing oh. that you have your enemy outnumbered and you can watch them circle around them and just wipe them from existence. It's great. It's a they, great feeling. They they just knew that that would be like the most delicious thing to say in that moment. They just, <laughs> they're like, what would be the ultimate thing to say? The ultimate feel good power fantasy thing to say in that moment. That's awesome, man. I love it. I love it. I definitely got to check it out. But um, yeah, Sam, man, thanks so much for uh, hanging out and talking about Odama. Um, again, Game's affordable. You can find it at the time of this recording. Affordable to check out, even though with the caveats that, that Sam has mentioned. Uh, where can folks find you online, Sam? Of course, we've already pointed out the, you know, you're now on RetroLogic, but in terms of your personal projects, where can folks find you? Yeah, so I'm pretty active on a couple different Discord servers. Uh, RetroLogic, the Nintendo Dads, uh, Nintendo Pals. Um, I, I usually use Discord as kind of my primary online interaction. I think right. there's a little bit more, because it's more of a chat room, it's a little bit more intimacy to it, so I prefer sure. that. Uh, but I do have Twitter just for, you know, as a kind of hub for anything I want to put out to the wider public. Uh, that's at Mole Third uh, at Twitter. Um, and Twitch uh, every Tuesday. Right now I'm going through Earthbound. Uh, which is one of my favorite games. It is also the reason I am called Third Strongest Mole. Yes, um, yes. So that's every Tuesday, 7 o'clock Eastern time. Um, other stream times periodically, but that's sort of my consistent go-to. So that's uh, Third Strongest Mole on Twitch. Got it. You guys will, of course, find links to all that stuff in the episode description. And uh, yeah, nice chill stream to, to pop in and hang out on. And uh, you engage with the chat. It's it's fun, man. It's fun to watch you on, uh, on Twitch. So you guys will find that in the episode description. Support Sam there. Listen to him on RetroLogic very, very soon. And if you guys want to keep up with this show, you can always subscribe to the video version on YouTube. You can like and subscribe and leave nice comments and nice reviews and all of that stuff wherever you're listening. And uh, we are proudly part of the All End Media Network. You can find links to all that in the episode description. You can also join the brand spanking new All End Discord server. That, too, is in the episode description. Until next time, guys, be good to each other, create what you want to create, and thank you for helping me keep Nintendo weird. Bye.